Hello everyone, today we're going to be covering pagination with the Kaminari gem. Now this one's a pretty easy to use gem. We've covered pagination before, uh, but in general I think the Kaminari gem probably has the easiest way of customizing it out of the bunch. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to do this really fast by referencing the GitHub repo for the gem. So I'll have a link to this in the video description as well as the source code for this video. So to get started, we're gonna go ahead and create a new Rails app. We'll say Rails new video, and then we'll CD into it, and then we'll run a code dot, which will open it up in our text editor VS code. Now there's a couple things with the Kaminari gem to be aware of. Uh, there is, like always, a pretty simple setup. You add the gem, you then have like a scaffold or something where in the controller you say, uh, I wanna have like 10 pages per post or whatever. That's pretty standard. What's really nice about this gem though is customizing stuff like the links or even the classes that are applied to these links uh, is very straightforward. So let's go ahead and let's add this real quick and take a look at what I mean by that. In terms of actually adding the gem, pretty much the only thing you have to do uh, is come into your gem file and at the bottom just type gem kaminari like that. You then go ahead and run a bundle command that will generate the, uh, or add the gem to your project as you would expect it to. Now, I think there is a configuring section. If we come in here, uh, in terms of the config command right here, it's the Rails G Kaminari config command. We can go ahead and run this. This will create a file in our config initializers and then the Kaminari gem. And here you can configure a lot of stuff like what your default per page is, your max per page, your window, uh, and some other stuff as well as like what your parameter is. So maybe you don't want to use like the page param and instead you just want this to be like the letter P maybe. Uh, you can do that in here as well. And then uh, as soon as you start your server, so if your server is already running, you're gonna have to stop it and start it again. Uh, but as soon as you then start your server, this will be working out of the box for you. Uh, to actually paginate, it's pretty simple. We can do a Rails G scaffold post and we'll say each post has a title and a body of type text. This really doesn't matter. It's just, we have something to work with. We can then come into our DB and our seeds file. We'll say uh, create 100 posts. Make control plus a couple times so you can actually read this. So we'll do 100 times do, and we'll do a post.create. Uh, it wants to use the faker gem here. I guess we can add that. We'll, we'll do anything too bad. We'll just go ahead and run a bundle command real quick. Uh, and then that should hopefully work. We can come in here and save this and then run a rails db colon uh, migrate db colon seed command to migrate and seed our database. So it'll take a second and then we should be good to go. Uh, so now we can go ahead and run a Rails S, come over to localhost port 3000 slash posts. Uh, and there we go. So we now have a hundred of these loading into the same page, takes a second, really not ideal. So let's go ahead and let's make this paginated real quick. To do that, we can come up into our app, our controllers, our post controller. And in our post controller, uh, pretty much the only thing we really have to do uh, is tell it how many we want to use here. So instead of doing this, uh, we we want to use Kaminari, right? And then we can say at posts uh, is post.page. Here's your params argument. So let's say you go to post slash uh, whatever I was just at or post qu question mark page equals seven, right? So in that case, you're going to page seven. You have five per page. So you're going to grab like the, what, the 35th uh, elements in here. Uh, and go from there. You can change both of these numbers. They'll also work based off of your defaults. But now if you come over to post slash page seven, right up here, uh, post question mark page equals seven, you can see we only have a couple of elements in here. We can check which ones we have in here by coming into our app or views or posts and our post partial. We'll just do, uh, we'll copy this title one and we'll just do ID and we'll set this to be the post.id. So we can at least see like which ones we're looking at. So for page equals seven, we're looking at 31 through 35. We're going at five per, so seven pages, we expect to be at uh, element 35 right here. So that makes sense, right? Now, how do we get those links? Well, the links are actually pretty easy. We can come into our posts index and at the top of our posts index page, paginate, and we want to paginate at posts. So we go ahead and save this. And now you can see we have all of our links here. So we can go over here to like the first item or the last item, jump around these, and this will work just like you would expect it to. Uh, you have your first, your previous buttons, all your other numbers and stuff. And you can also just navigate to like, let's say page 15 up here uh, manually, and that'll work just fine. 
Now, what if we want to change some of these words and these links? Well, that's actually pretty easy to do. Uh, unfortunately, I closed my notes, but we can come up here to, uh, it's going to be in our config, our locales, and our en.yaml. And inside of our en.yaml, hopefully they have this in here. Uh, let's look for locale, maybe. Uh, you're going to want to come into this section in the GitHub repository and copy all of this, paste it in, and then let's just make sure this is tabbed over right. It is. Okay, cool. So what this is going to allow you to do in this in this page is uh, effectively customize any of these words. So if you see this weird, uh, you know, gibberish right here, this usually corresponds to the actual symbol that's being uh, shown there. So they have like the what is it, the Chiron or whatever. Uh, they also have like the the words if you want to change these. So instead of having the word first, let's change this to the word test right here. And then if I refresh, you'll see that says test. Uh, for the previous one, we could change this to say like previously on lost. Go ahead and save that. And now you can see that that appears there. So that's how you can customize a lot of those. Uh, and of course, you can also see some of the uh, variables that are being used here uh, and some other stuff. So this is how you would customize it. Now, let's say instead of wanting to customize it, you wanted to, uh, you know, add some custom CSS. If we come up here, we hit Control Shift I to open this up, click on the little arrow and then click on one of these links. We can see here uh, this has a class of PREV for previous. So that's useful. We can come in here to our assets, our style sheets and our application that's S or CSS. And we can, so what we can do is we can say PREV uh, and for the PREV, uh, which is going to be right here. We can see that this has a A inside of it. So you're also going to have the, um, you're going to need to grab the A link inside of the PREV. Oops, this needs to be what I'm doing. Uh, and then in here you can say uh, color is going to be uh, one, two, three. Oops, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? Save that, come over here and refresh. And now you can see we've changed this color. This is kind of cumbersome though, and kind of cringe. So instead what you can do is you can come in here and you can stop your server, do a Rails G Kaminari, and it should be right here. We can do a Rails G Kaminari views. If you run this, it'll show you all of the different options in here. Uh, and what we're really looking for is generating the, uh, the actual views themselves. So, oops, so let me do a uh, Rails G common views and hit the up arrow key a couple times to hopefully find what we're looking for. So we're going to pass in the default here, just like this. And this will generate a couple different things. It's going to go into app views common and then you're going to have a bunch of partials. So let's go ahead and let's open one of these up, come into our app, our views common and let's say the first page partial, right? In our first page partial, you'll see a span along with a link. And this is how you can sort of style these things if you want to. So you can see right here, this is for our first page link. So let's come into our locale real quick and let's change the first uh, back to a, the word first, just like we had it. Let's do a Rails S, start our server, refresh a couple times until Brave catches up. Okay, so for our first link, what we want to do is instead of just having this be a link to blah, 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 let's give this a class equal to my uh, unique class name. Go ahead and save that over here and refresh. Now let's grab this and click on the actual a tag here. Now you can see this has this class. So instead of doing this ugly nonsense, we can just replace this with our actual class name, refresh. And now you can see that's being applied to our first uh, a tag in here. So we no longer have to do that. We can fully customize these links. If we want to, we can even put like, I don't know, the word uh, bacon in here, right? save this and now that'll also be rendered as a part of this link. So this will work for all of these where you can see every single one of these is is available in here. You can come in and you can customize these as you see fit. Some of them like the pagination itself are going to be a little bit more involved, uh, but it's pretty easy to figure out what they're for. Now, if you want to actually customize this with a theme, that's also pretty easy to do. And we'll just do this real quick. If you come in here and you type your Rails G common reviews again, uh, right here, you can see all of the different themes that are available to you. Some of them aren't too great. They're kind of boring uh, and some of them are, are perfectly fine. We can grab like the Bulma theme, for example, go ahead and run this, it would do a space after the views, pass in Bulma. It'll ask us if we want to overwrite. I'm going to hit A to overwrite all. Uh, so be careful if you're doing this with something you've already customized. We can come over here, refresh. And now you can see it's, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really look great, uh, but this, I guess, is what it's supposed to look like. We can stop the server. We can run our common reviews again. And we can grab one that looks a little bit more interesting. Let's grab the GitHub one. So we'll do the same thing. We'll hit the up arrow key, 
space, pass in the GitHub, and then we'll uh, hit A again when it asks us to. Hit Control L, Rails S, hit F11 to close this. Come over here and refresh. And now you can see we have these cool little, the newer and older buttons here uh, without any of the other stuff. So in this case, we are losing out on some of the functionality. Do a little bit of styling though. Uh, that said, the uh, actual documentation is wonderful. It's really easy to use. Uh, depending on what you want to do, you can pretty much just come in here and search for it. And you can figure out how to do whatever you need to. So pretty much everything I've covered here is covered in the documentation. Like here's your, your locale section. Uh, you have the ability to edit your paginator by running the generator. Uh, and here's the part that covers the themes. So you get the idea. So yeah, I just thought it'd be interesting to cover. I've covered a couple other pagination gems on the channel before, but uh, I think this one's pretty popular and I can definitely see why it's really easy to use. Highly recommend uh, checking it out. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you found this interesting and helpful and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.